Everything here looks like an Excel spreadsheet, but a row can actually participate on multiple plans. So you might choose to put that row on a, on a main plan uh, for that project and then pull out the milestones from that plan and put it on a consolidated project plan, which pulls paths from many plans, and then create a tenancy relationship on the overall view. And if you change that row in one place, it will change in either document as well as update the tenancy. In the back, Gary? Uh, this is at least the third project like this I've heard of in the last 12 months. Who's your competition and why are you better? So there is that a whole pile of online tools. Certainly Basecamp is the biggest brand name in the state. Central Desktop, Noble Project uh, are some other big names and there's a ton of little competitors. What's very different about Real Project is so with all of these you can build the online project plan and you can make a Google Docs like thing. Uh, but it, it has a project plan structure. But where Real Project really excels is number one, in that delivery of tasks to the tools that you're actually using to manage your day. So these great links to calendars and tasks. And number two, this visualization across projects so that you can take a look at projects and uh, kind of understand what tasks do, what's coming up, uh, do reporting across projects in a way that other tools do not do well. I'm wondering if you have any features that um, support the Scrum methodology across the development? Deal Project is a, is a generic tool, like uh, uh, Excel, for example. So there are lots of customers who build in specific templates, and Deal Project is a templating functionality where you can implement your methodology in the class and expand spreadsheet metaphor and have multiple project documents. Uh, some people have a, a place where they manage a backlog and they move those into a document that's going to be then used as a sprint. Um, so you have to implement your particular methodology. Um, but once you do, there are many customers who implement a very specific cluster building process. John, who's your customer and what's your cost? Uh, Deal Project is a, it's a, it's a premium model. So you can build five of these project plans or issue trackers for free forever. You set up a site. Um, and then there's a subscription plan that starts at $20 a month to ramp up additional capacity or do some of the integration with more with uh, Salesforce.com and some of the other um, more expensive. Leader by feature, leader by user or template, leader by feature. That's right. So you have a small team, you run a project or two, it's free. And if you have a larger team, it starts at $20 a month. All right, thank you very much. Let's give it up for John. <laughs>
coming.
beginning, they are the price will be zero. We what's on what will be that um, the first couple of months we will gain power and we will actually uh, see the product from ourselves, which actually pays for quite a bit at the beginning. But uh, market power is at the end of the day where we hold traffic. You put 20, but believe it that someone else will put, put 30 and 40 and so on. So when we have traffic and enough people, that it is great market. And it's the fact that this is a good market. So actually at the beginning of the, the zero is the only way, the only, uh, the only situation where we have initial prices. Uh, later on, we want to create Cloud. For example, someone has a million points, so we can raise cloud. You can get into this auction, specific, I don't know, car or whatever. You can just you need to put some initial money to get it back. Does that answer your question? Yeah, um, well, I guess the other question I have is are you launched now, and if so, are you get revenue? I, mean, I, I understand it's one perfect play, right? I can give you very later if you want. Um, but uh, we actually, we did, like, we have to launch, we're just looking for. This is the beta that we saw right now. People are playing, but uh, a lot of better players. And what we're looking for right, and right now is for initial seeds to uh, put really good products and then just put some items on. So we're just waiting for one more step and we're on the way. Cool. Okay. Got a question in the back? Right? Yeah.
portion of it. Um, okay, our goal is to build an energy oracle for buildings. So it will see all. So it will know what your building looks like, what the place in different rooms is, etc. It'll know what the actual performance is from actual measurements and sensors. So there are often sensors in building already through the building automation system. Um, it will give expert advice. So you'll know um, are there problems in your equipment, are your schedules operating properly. It will give you advice on upgrades, should you upgrade your boiler, what will the back be. Um, and it needs to be convenient, useful, and actually used, unlike some tools that are out there. So we're talking about building energy consumption. Um, okay, the, big, the primary concern of facility staff is oxygen comfort. Um, the functions that consume energy, eating, cooling, lighting, other equipment, computer equipment. Um, we look at energy divided up into different zones. So it's the YMCA, there's the pool zone, the gymnasium, the child care and fitness area. So you can look at schedules, you know, the lights consume a lot of energy during the daytime and night, there's basically no light. Um, and then you can look at the control system. Um, building control systems are sophisticated systems that um, control the heating and cooling equipment. Sometimes they can be integrated with security and fire backup uh, emergency backup power. Um, we talk about the plumbing of the, of the building that actually um, carries the heat and the cold air around for uh, fresh air also. Um, here are some typical screens you see if you are a facilities manager. You'd be able to look at the equipment. Here's an air handler on the left and um, an actual floor plan with, uh, you can see with the ventilation system <coughs> and the temperatures in the different rooms. Um, and you could, this is stuff for this outdoor day. You can click on a room and change the temperature. You can change the airflow going through the, the um, you, you can change the outside air damper position to change the outside air coming into the building or the airflow through the building. So that you can do to, that would affect both actually comfort and energy consumption. So back to this uh, energy oracle. Um, the two things you want to really look at are making the best of what you have right now which is just, you know, the best expense way to go about things. So are your schedules that you're attending for the building actually being followed? You can hook up um, current transducers to the electric panel and find out, you know, what's the electricity con consumption, the profile of different uh, main components in the building. Uh, you can do fall detection. There are simple ways that the YMCA, what they do is they look at one month versus the next or this month versus last year. It's, it's very, um, very vague information, but it's useful. You can see it, how their consumption is going. There's a lot more sophisticated techniques um, using the the control, the uh, building control system, the sensors there. And you can also use uh, electrical signature analysis, which I'll get to. Um, for as upgrades, you want to look at the piece of equipment, cost benefit. Okay. Okay, the technologies that will be involved in that will be involved in this energy oracle converting the architectural mechanical drive and the schedules into an energy use model for the building. And there's there's a Department of Energy software called EQuest, which is free. I, I'm sure there are ways to tie it, but I haven't checked into it yet. But as far as source code, sensors, fault diagnosis, and detection. That's what FCP is. Um, Integrating with the building control software, we're not going to be writing our own, but seeing the tiny little adjunct to control. Um, and then we'll go on. So let me ask the first question. What okay. is this slide, John? <laughs> okay, this slide here. <laughs> it's the technology I was working on that summer, which is still a uh, project for us. The idea is we take the uh, electric current over time. Uh, convert, along with the voltage, convert the power, you just aggregate the load, and you look at the signatures. And the next slide here shows uh, this from a research paper. Uh, some guys that I might see at Pacific Northwest Lab did where you can actually detect specific faults based on variations in the electric signature, the transient signature, the frequency harmonics of once it's in steady state. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Maybe you're bidding on an auction if you have a question. <laughs> okay. 
So how is this sold? Is it sold on a payback basis? Is it, is it sold on a payback <laughs> basis? Well, for one, we're not there yet. The idea to, in order for the software to be used, it really needs to tie in with the building automation system. The building people don't like changing the screens. They're very, you know, they like things very simple in their office. So, seeing as how you adjust the controls, we need to develop something far enough to approach them and develop partnerships. Would this be for a new building or for retrofit? For new construction. Um, for new building. So the big thing is uh, the size of the building. And do they already have a building automation system and is one thing um, going to be going here? Okay. What is the switch from residential? Why did we switch from residential? <laughs> Um, residential energy flows aren't that big, and the, on a pure, um, well, I guess it's too weird, but on a pure um, uh, cost-benefit analysis, if we're going to sell this, you know, if it's something to sell for $1,000, it's probably going to take 10 or 20 years in order to pay back. Um, the other thing is, the technology, the technology, uh, The technology for um, load disaggregation, it's, um, it's easy to do if you're just looking at a few loads and they're very different, but there are a lot of obstacles to, um, to getting it to work really reliably to, to disaggregate all the loads in the home and track your energy consumption. It's, um, it's a challenging problem. Another thing is you have to actually go to the electric panel and hook up some current transducers. And you're not actually touching live wires when you do that, but it's not something that people want to do the yeah. All right, let's give it up for John